Okay, so I'm gonna do a sh quick video. We did some splits yesterday. The uh, I have a little bit of a cold, so I apologize. The first hive here with the blue and the red had four deeps and two supers. And the yellow hive in the background there, that had four deeps and one super. Uh, they all ever overwintered very well. Um, huge, huge hive. I actually should have split them last fall. Didn't get to it this year. Um, this last fall, so I had to split them this spring. So, took three of us about two hours yesterday to make splits. We divided them down, we unboxed all of them, took all the frames out of all of them, divided the brood up among the new splits. Um, so, uh, pan over here, and those two back there are our first two splits. Um, our more colorful boxes, of course, we were a little bit more prepared this time for those. Um, they are 10 frames. And uh, this is a new, kind of a new deal. Um, trying it out. Supposedly, I can make these splits, and instead of going more than two or three miles away with the splits, I, uh, I moved them over here, and uh, I taped the entrances off completely and it's about 55 out so they're not going to overheat and i'm going to leave them taped off confined to their new home for three days and then i'm going to untape them and hopefully uh any bees that are going to start coming and going do their orientation flight and uh, will not end up moving back over here to their old hive um so we'll see how that goes uh i took out frames when we broke these all down, I was hoping out of the four deeps and two supers that I'd be able to make two splits. So I had over here space for three uh, hives, but I did not make a third split because I got into the hive and uh, the blue box was completely empty. Um, there was no, there were no bees, there was no pollen, there was no honey, there was no brood, there was nothing. So, I technically only had three deeps full, and out of those three deeps, when I went through all the frames, um, I felt like there was only enough larva in its very beginning stage to, uh, to make one split safely. And I will note that I did not find the queen in either one of the hives. I looked and looked and looked and looked, and we could not find the queen. So being it that I don't want to risk uh, transferring the queen over to the new splits I made sure that the new splits and these hives here that I left behind both had enough larva in order to rear a new queen that way I did not have to make sure that she was left in the original hives and that um, the new larva went into the other one so just to be safe I did not make too many splits I just made an even split or a um, spin-off split that had enough larva, enough brood, enough pollen, and enough honey to be able to leave them closed in their new split for three days and then let the nurse bees raise the new larva that should be hatching out and eventually turn into forage bees and begin their new hive. So they've not done it this way before, so we're going to try it out, see what we can do, see if it works. We've got a little bit of fun stuff here. This was all of the burr comb, all of the drone cells, all of the wacky foundation or uh, comb that they had done last fall because they were too crowded in there. Uh, there's a lot of bees and uh, there's some more up there. You can see that that's all drone that got pulled out. In fact, there's a drone on it. Um, so anyway, a little bit of an experiment. Like I said, I've never done it this way before, so uh, I hope to come back here at least in a couple days and let you know what uh, what occurs if the new hives, uh, the new splits end up opening up and coming and going, and then I'm going to keep an eye out for signs of a new eggs and a new queen and the new splits, and if this works, it'll uh, drastically reduce the labor intensity of having to go back and forth from a two or three mile radius and constantly shuffling my hives back and forth for any new hives. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching.